Welcome to another episode of Project SAFE, Seniors Against Financial Exploitation. In the United States, it is estimated that 25 to $30 billion a year is taken from seniors in various methods, financial exploitation being the number one cause. In the town of North Hempstead, there is approximately 60, no, I'm sorry, excuse me, 50,000 uh, seniors over the age of 60 and approximately 20,000 retirees. That's because some people are fortunate enough to retire before the age of 60. It is estimated that 10% of them will receive some sort of scam during the course of the following year. Today's program is to help seniors and retirees focus on the challenges that face them and offer some tools and advice on how to avoid a potential scam. I'm John Ryan and this is my partner Peter Janowski and it is my pleasure to introduce John Durso who is the president of the Long Island Federation AFL-CIO. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure, John. Pleasure to be here. Uh, I always like to start off these interviews with how did you wind up where you are? I mean, you're one of the most important people on Long Island, and it's... I want you to tell my wife that. <laughs> <laughs> I hope she's going to watch this show. <laughs> but it's the truth, and, and yet you're a normal guy, and you're watching out for people. Well, I mean, that's, that's what we do in the labor movement. I mean, I'm a very, very fortunate uh, individual. I started out in 1970 as a uh, part-time deli clerk for Walbaum Supermarkets. Uh, for those of you who remember Walbaums, uh, I remember it fondly. Wow. Uh, and I worked in the grocery stores and uh, through different uh, positions in the stores. And the uh, gentleman who joined, uh, signed me into the union eventually became the president of the union. And in uh, 1982, uh, he was talking to me and he asked me if I wanted to come work for the union. You're still in war bombs? I was still in war bombs. Okay, I was, okay. Still, I was still in war bombs. I had been with war bombs. I went to Hill Supermarket, okay, the company, and then uh, back to war bombs. I worked in their warehouse. Uh, and uh, in uh, 83, I uh, became a member of the staff of Local 338, and 84 became an organizer, and uh, 15 years later, I became the president. It's amazing. And then uh, in 2005, I was uh, elected the president of the Long Island Federation of Labor, which is 100 and about 160 unions here on Long Island. It's representing 250,000 uh, working people here on Long Island. We're the fourth largest federation in the United States. Wow. That's amazing. No idea. Peter, as we talked a little before, he's an ex-local three, not an ex-local three, but that's where he Once got his Once local three, always <laughs> local three. Yeah. yeah, I have some roots in labor. Yeah. Absolutely. One of the things we want to talk about is retirees. Yes. And as, um, just to bring to people's attention, some of the shortfalls that, you know, when we, it, it's wonderful working with the union. And you have security and you have health care, et cetera, during the time you're employed. Yes. And unfortunately, once guys and gals retire, it's a whole new world, and it's a world, unfortunately, where people enjoy taking advantage of people. Oh, absolutely, and you know, it's it's one of the challenges we in the labor movement have uh, with our members. Uh, regardless of what local you're with, uh, some locals have the ability to offer uh, financial planning. Some locals have uh, advice in, uh, for you. Uh, I know some of our teachers, uh, locals have the ability where somebody comes in and speaks to you before you go. One of my, one of my staff, his mom is a retired teacher. Okay. They have a certain amount of hours uh, where they get some uh, advice. But the vast majority don't. So we try to uh, educate them, guide them, especially to tell them to be careful. Right. You know, what we're talking about here today Today because the there is always the uh, less than admirable people who are looking to take advantage so you know wear your union not just while you're working okay. you wear your union if you, you you know you retire from the union you retire from work but not from your union so we are we try to be there for you at all times and all of us all of the different uh, groups in the Federation uh, do the same thing to try to help and guide and be there as a resource for people you know we have a lot of clients that have retired from unions but you just said something very significant. You retired from your job, but not from your union. Sure. A lot of jobs, you retire from the job, they give you a watch, they give you, and maybe give you nothing. And that's it, you're done. They These days, they don't even give you a time. Well, it's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> but in, from a union perspective, right, they, 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 it's ongoing. 
Absolutely. Uh, which is important because you are a member of a family. That's right. And that's one of the, the wonderful things about a union. It is a family. It is because we work together to improve the lives of all of us, not just one person, but for all of us to, uh, to improve the lives of the thousands of people that we have the privilege of representing. And that's just not today while you're working, but as you prepare to retire and after you retire, you know, and we try, especially at my local, we make it a point to reach out to our retirees and let them know that we're here right, right. for you if you need us. You know, we don't want to intrude upon your life, but we want to be there as a resource if you, if you need help, if you need guidance, if there's a door we can open for you. I mean, that's an important part of it, you know, about your mission and, you know, when you're privileged to serve people, it's a it's it's part of the mantle of responsibility. That's how we look at it. That's amazing, and that's something that, and again, I'm t talking in general terms, lacking today. I mean, it's very often you're gone, you're gone. No, you know. It's, yeah, just a, it's just a lack of caring for better, better right, expression. Right, Unfortunately, right, right. it's a sad truth. But I just have a, have a question for you. In a, in a lot of your. Um, uh, members, I'm sure a lot of benefits are paid into the system from employers. Yes. Right? So is there anything you would recommend to union members on how to make sure or check on to see if, if employers are doing what they're supposed to be doing as far as paying into benefits? Well, you know, we as the trustees, it is our responsibility, our fiduciary responsibility to make sure those employers are paying on that and making sure their contributions are being paid. That's, that's our responsibility. Right. But every union member has the right to follow up. In my local in particular, I'll give you an example, we have set up what we call a member portal. So a member, if you were a member, right. you have your uh, password protected ID. Nobody else has that. You can go into the system. You can look at all your medical bills. You can look at your pending bills. You can look, if you can put in, if you're going to retire in 10 years on November 10th in 2025, you can put that date into the, into the system and it'll tell you what your pension is going to be worth. So that, wow. and you can see how, whether or not payments have come in for your pension. Mm -hmm. So it's all right that are there. That's, you know, it, people talk about transparency and that's, you know, so we, we want to do because, <clears throat> because you have the responsibility of, you know, people have elected you and they, your, your responsibility is to protect them, protect right. their lives, protect mm -hmm. their, and the lives of their families. So, you know, we look at that as a, a, a tremendous responsibility, so we want to make sure that every member <clears throat> should, who has a pension, should receive on a yearly basis, you know, uh, information on his pension, what it's worth, how it is. They, they should have some sort right. of knowledge. And if they don't have a pension, they have a 401k. You have to you receive that information to get out there so that you know. And then if you have a question, you bring it up right then and there. Don't wait, well, I'm not going to retire for 10 years. No, no, don't do that. You do it as soon as you see a discrepancy, and it happens. People, right, a mistake course. can yeah, right. happen, something like that. Decimal point could be put in the wrong place, not usually in your favor, <laughs> but you have, to, you have to look and you check to make sure. And you deal with it right then and there, and then you get your paperwork showing that it's corrected, and that you keep. So that's fantastic. 30 years ago when I was just getting started, they didn't have the technology to do that. Of but course. if we see the same thing to our clients, the same thing with Social Security. You could go onto the Social Security Administration website and make sure your employers over the years have been paying into it right. and where, where you're supposed to be, and it also helps project what you might end up with benefits as well. Oh, absolutely. Look, I'm I'm of the age now where I guess I could retire. Not that, in case any of our members are looking, I'm not interested in retiring. You have to okay. go right to the camera I for that one. I just want you to know I have no interest in retiring. All right. you know, I, listen, I, you know, when you get up in the morning and you look forward to going to work, yeah. you're not ready to retire. You know, I can't, yeah, wait, I to, I can't wait to get going. No, you're very morning. lucky. A lot of people don't say that, unfortunately. And, and that, that's true. Yeah. I'm, I'm, that's why you know, I've, I feel very blessed. I have a, a job uh, that I enjoy going to uh, every, every single day. But I you know, prepare. You know, I, have a, I have a wife. I have uh, four children. I have seven grandchildren. I need to make sure that, God forbid, something should happen, everybody's taken right, care of. Right, right. That's my responsibility as a father, as a, as a husband, and as a grandparent. And, you know, we try to educate our members the, 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 the same, same thing. Uh -huh. You know, that it's not just about today, it's about tomorrow and the day after right, that right. We, have to, we have to look at. We, we try to advise them to get the 
best information possible. And as we were talking about before, not just for one person, get from a second person, get a second opinion. Right, right, right. Know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Find somebody who is reputable, somebody who has experience, somebody that knows what they're talking about, not your, your aunt's cousin's boyfriend who uh, made a hit on the, in the market. Right, right, no, right. no, you want somebody who's been there steady every day. It's better to make uh, a steady $100 than 100%. to take a shot and, and make it $1,000 when it's a fly-by-night. Awesome. We, we recently had a guest on, from, uh, on another episode who dealt with Medicare, and we right. learned that Medicare goes county by county. County. So many times someone will say, well, you know, I, my friend is getting this gap insurance for such a better rate. How come? And she's doing it. Well, it's county by county. Right. Your friend could be living in New Jersey or mm -hmm. Suffolk. You live in Queens. Absolutely. And that's the difference. But it, it just relates to what you're saying. You want an expert. And uh, that brings us to a lot of times uh, when we do Project Safe seminars, we're, we're telling our audience that um, having a trusted friend is very important. Not, not just a second opinion, but a trusted contact. So in other words, when you get to the point where you've, you're going to retire or you have retired and you're not sure what the statements look like and you, you want someone else to look, you know, if you hire a financial advisor or, or if you're working with a bank, whatever it is, you may want duplicate statements, right. duplicate confirmations. So if something looks out of order, you know, if somebody, why is this, you know, what I spend $10 on, I don't understand it. How come my account went down this month when the market went up? A second set of trusted eyes is prudent. It oh, makes a I, lot of I, sense. You know what, I think that's fabulous. And just on a personal uh, level, I have to say, my wife is that for her mom. That's her mom perfect. is 91 years old. Mm -hmm. Living on her own, doesn't want any part of coming to live with us or anybody okay. else. She's very independent, very independent. <laughs> Okay, but my wife gets a, gets a second copy to make sure, sure that, and she has seen, well, you know, forgot to pay this bill. Okay, that's okay? perfect. That's a, what it's for. A tax for. bill. Right. A tax bill wasn't paid, okay? So my wife, dutiful daughter, well, made sure it was done. But that's exactly right. It makes absolute sense that you have somebody that you trust uh, completely. And it doesn't have to be a family member. Some, not everybody has right. families. It could be a neighbor. It could be a friend. It could be someone at the local senior center that they, they entrust. Somebody you trust. It doesn't have to be a genius. Right. It's just somebody right. you trust. And we'll turn around and say, John, what is this? Right. Yes. Actually, you have a great story about the singing. Tremendous uh, story. The singing. Uh, that uh, an elderly man was going through his finances later in life, same age as your mother-in-law, and went to an accountant, and that's when he brought the family in, and was going through his checks and said, you're writing a check every month for a hundred and some odd dollars um, to a person slash organization for this last three years. What is this for? None of his kids had ever seen his checking account. He said, that's for church, but you're not making it out to church, that. He says, no, no, years ago, I got a call. He sings in the church choir. And he was called and brought to his attention that he was singing copyrighted songs and could go to jail if he didn't pay the ASCAP fee, or whatever you call it, that gives you permission to sing a song from an artist. He had been paying it every year for the last three years until they finally caught it. No money ever came back. But if your daughter said, Ma, what is that? I sent it to a friend. In the second month, she would see it again. She'd say, Mommy, this doesn't make sense. Who is this person? Why are you sending it? Right. Oh, well, I want to sing in the church. You could sing in the church anyway. I didn't know that. And it stops it, and people have to talk. Absolutely. And that's what we push. It's like, you don't have to do this alone. Don't be embarrassed. There are no stupid questions. No, I, listen, I agree. I, I remember my mother, uh, she should rest in peace. Uh, she was sending a check out every month, uh, and I questioned it. Turns out it was a legitimate okay. organization. Okay, I just fine. didn't like the organization. Okay. But she, she told me my own business. But yeah, but uh, but I checked through it. I mean, that's, that's the fine. You know? Yeah, now they have the right to spend the money they want. They, they want 100%. Right. You're not going to stop your mother in law. But make sure it's a legit organization right. and a legit reason. Um, and if she supports something you don't, that's a whole different ballgame. Oh, yeah. that, that, that's was, mother and very, son. It was, it was very, very, it was a typical one of our conversations. Okay. <laughs> you know, but, but it was, the idea is that there was that second pair of eyes. Right. I, my uh, job, I was the executive of her estate, uh, and, you know, but also as the, the eldest son, I was, you know, I took that extra responsibility. Right, okay. Just to check. Right, right. No, 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 you know, but it's, I think it's so very helpful. Right. It happened, you know, we see it, because that's what Peter and I do a lot. It happens so much more than you want to know. 
and, and it's and the thing is, if you are going to scam a, a retiree or a senior, you're not doing it with twenty thousand dollars because all of a sudden the flag goes up. Right. Most people. hundred dollars. Yeah. Who's? It's not your mother-in-law's finances won't change if she's sending one hundred and twenty-five dollars a month to somebody. Five well, years from now, it's mm -hmm. seven, six, seven thousand. Six or seven thousand dollars. Most Absolutely. people don't come forward. No one's. No one wants to admit that they got scammed. There's a right. lot, big sense of embarrassment, and sure. we, we talk about that uh, many times. Every time we give a project safe right. presentation, that basically the key word is no. You don't. You don't do it over the phone. You don't do it. You know, if someone calls, you don't give out personal information. You know, if something was real, like the IRS, if they're going to get in touch with you, it's going to be through the mail. It's not going to be a phone call. Yeah, right. And at the end of the day, it always seems like. When we're done with the presentation, someone comes up to us after the presentation and they say, like recently we did one in front of, I don't know, maybe 40 people. Uh, uh, a senior lady came up to us and said, I sent $20,000. I got scammed because of the grandson scam. You've heard the grandson scam? And she was... Yeah, and Grandson's she was, in trouble. Right, right. right. And she, she was sent embarrassed. Twenty thousand dollars. And had to do with the, with the relationship with her son because she didn't want to get the son upset because he has a bit of a temper and it, it doesn't make sense. And I'll just the boy I'll just take the, care the, of it. The grandson getting right. in trouble. Keep the peace. Keep the peace. So just send the twenty thousand dollars. She came to us. Can I get it back? No. Right. It's done. Right. I mean, it's yeah. like that's the problem. And and let's go back to the union. There's a place you can call. That's what I'm saying. I mean, if somebody is retiring from a union. Utilize the stuff that's there. Ask somebody, even if, you know, there's always somebody to talk to and say, here, I'm going off with $100,000 and I was just told I can get 15% a year on my money. Stop, stop it. Stop, stop it. Presses. You know, slap me in the head. <laughs> yeah. No, and, and it's true. And whether you're retiring with a, uh, a monthly check or you're retiring with your 401k, there are investments or things that you have to make. There are decisions that you right. have to make. Speak to someone. Speak to your union. Speak to a financial advisor. Speak to a trusted person right, right. To, to give you that second opinion or that first opinion and, and then look around because there are, unfortunately our society has so many uh, scam artists right. that, that look to prey upon somebody who might uh, might be ignorant to what the right, facts right. are. It's been that way for thousands of years. I believe with the union, you can get like credit card help and mortgage help. Absolutely. And that stays with you even after you retire or no? There are, there are benefits that continue. Okay. And there, you know, there are some that are for active benefits, and it depends upon the local. It, oh, you know, really? Some, okay. Oh, yeah. You know, depending upon which local, some locals, Local 3 as an example, has an extraordinary amount of benefits why you're active and even afterwards. You know, okay, some locals, uh, depending upon what their financial capabilities are, right? Uh, the, so, you know. The, it, it, the union's capability or the, the, the client? The union's capability. Oh, okay. The union's okay. capability to offer benefits. You know, some some folks, uh, some unions, they're concentrating on the work, the, the working man. Okay. Okay, and have some things for uh, retirees. Some don't. Some, you know, uh, work with different organizations that get them dis get them discounts. Right, okay. Or they'll work with the AARP, or they'll work with one of the other groups that are that are out there. Uh, but depending upon, all the unions have something. Okay. But it's always worthwhile to say. What can what can you help me with? Where can where can I go? Can I come in and sit down with you? And that's one of the things that we you know, we take great pride in. And I, as I said before, you retire from the job, not from the union. Uh, that's a, that's already, a great line. I've never heard it before, and it's a great. Oh, line. It's, it, but it's but it's the truth, and, right. and and that's the thing. And every union, every union wants their retirees to stay in touch with them. Right. There are things that you know. There are things that we fight for that affect the retirees every single day. Mm -hmm. Every day, whether it be in um, the town of North Hempstead or Nassau County or Suffolk County, Albany or Washington, these are all the things that unions fight for daily on behalf of their membership, whether they are active or retirees. Because we're all going to be retirees, God willing. Eventually. Mm -hmm. You know, right. uh, someday. So, you know, it's all for, it's for all of us. So therefore, from a family perspective, when you're battling for something and, and you're getting a group together, You'll have retirees come back also. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's not just the working man at that point oh, and no. woman at that Reti point. In time. Retirees, listen, a lot of times retirees, they want to be involved. And it's incumbent upon the unions to, to invite them in. People want to be involved, people want to participate. People like to be busy, they like the camaraderie that, that's involved. Absolutely. Wow. And we love it.
when our retirees uh, come in and help out and, you know, come have a cup of coffee, sit down, chit chat a little bit, right, what's right, going right, on, right, right, right. how's things going. It's, it's, it's a wonderful thing. I'm sure you must have retiree associations within. Many of the different right. unions have different uh, associations, retiree clubs, mm -hmm. luncheons, things like that. Again, I go back because of your, because uh, again, local three is the is the gold standard. It's very, is it very really? different. Oh yeah, it, really? you know, absolutely. It, it yeah. really has. Oh, they yeah. have a motorcycle club. They have, you know, they do. Yeah, I mean, they have borough clubs. They have uh, sportsmen's club. Everything. Absolutely. Wow. Retirees club. Everything. You know, yeah. when we do some of the charity works that we that we work on, that you know, we do a, we do a lot of work with the United Way and. Uh, Island Harvest, Long Island Cares, all of these different things, the Thiessen uh, uh, Foundation for Sick Children. Okay. Okay. Local three, Memphis, three, uh, the motorcycle, they come, they participate. Oh, it's, wow. it's so much fun. And many of the different locals do. The retirees come, the active members come. One of the, one of the uh, things that most people don't know is how generous and how community-minded union members are. You know, the average, you know, when you go, uh, your kids or grandchildren are in Little League, that Little League coach very often is a union member and wants to give back, not just for his kids, but to be involved in the community. It's, it's a Boy Scout, the Girl Scout leaders. It's, uh, it's what we do. Wow. I mean, I know it from you. Yeah, I mean, it's a local I know the story. I was yeah, never, we, my, go, my family was never union. Yeah. It was individual. Yeah businesses we had and that was the end of it so there was never a union my, 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 I'm, my grandfather was a member of the International Lady Garment Workers Union oh. came to the country off the boat mm -hmm. early 1900 so uh, you know I have cousins as school teachers member of the union so it's, it goes through uh, through a few through generations but um, we don't have enough time. This isn't appropriate to get into union talk here. But, he's, but, he's a union. You know, I mean, yeah, well, I mean, we, can, we can spend the next three days talking straight about this. And, and listen, there's been a lot of changes in the last several years and what's going on with uh, unions in the country and the economy, and it's all intertwined. But again, this is this is more to protect, you, you know, protect people, and that's what Project Safe is about. But is there anything coming up in the horizon that may change? Um, in your mind, may change retirement situations for union members? Anything well, the, laws coming through state, national level, anything? Well, there is a law, the Butch Lewis uh, bill, mm -hmm. which is in Congress, right? Uh, Sherwood Brown, uh, uh, the senator from Ohio, is one of the uh, key sponsors. And that bill is built to protect uh, union pension plans, or pension plans in general. Mm -hmm. Not just union, but pension plans in general. But in particular, uh, Taft-Hartley uh, defined benefit plans. Uh, so, and that's, that is, it is such an important bill. Because ever since the uh, financial debacle in 2008, uh, many, many uh, pension plans have, were depleted. The losses were tremendous. Not everyone has recovered. Right. Okay. Oh, okay. Even though there's been a boom in the economy, yeah, oh, yeah, not every pension plan has recovered. Mm -hmm. And then there's been a loss of employers. You know, I mentioned Warbounds before. For my particular local, Warbounds was the single largest employer. Really? They're gone. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So the contributions to our pension plan were diminished because of the loss of that. Mm -hmm. Now we had we reacted quickly uh, made some changes, some adjustments so that our pension plan is, is, is secure. But not everybody was able to move as quickly. So I'm just going to jump in with a question. The, plate, the, the stores that have been taken over the Walmart locations, Wall are Bounds. they, Wall Bounds, I'm sorry, Wall Bounds, are they contributing? Some and some aren't. Oh, okay. That's another whole Right. I know one that isn't, but they don't I, think, have I don't know. It's like the wall balance is gone. It's like there's no more contracts. So no, I understand right, that. Right, but the companies that took over some of the stores, right. you know, some have become unionized right. and some that, haven't. That was my right. question. Okay. okay, so that's an ongoing battle, but that's a conversation for another day. Right. So, but you so you have a, de a depletion in the contributions into the pension plan. Now that's just one local. Now, you have. I remember uh, years ago, uh, Teamsta local that I that I know. Their three main employers all went out of business. Oh. All went out of business within an 18 month period of time. So contributions to their pension fund were devastated. Right, absolutely. It's not their fault, it's not the union's fault, but it's devastated because of business, so you have to make adjustments. That affects the pension. So now if you retire, 
you retire, for, let's say you're getting $1,000 a month. If your pension plan goes into bankruptcy, right, bankruptcy, right, right. okay, there is the benefit, uh, benefit uh, guarantee corporation, which guarantees you a certain level. But your pension could drop from a thousand to seven hundred dollars. Right, right. Okay. Now, if you're retired, where do you make that three hundred dollars a month right, you shortfall? Don't. That's why there is uh, these laws that are being looked at, because, in my opinion and from everything that I have seen, there is a pension crisis in this country that will hit, mm -hmm. and that will affect, obviously, all our seniors, all of those who want to become seniors. And without mm -hmm. some, inter uh, some intervention from the government, you know, they saved the auto industry, right. which was fantastic. The pension industry which is the average working man and women in this, China, uh, this country, needs that help. And this law will go a long way to do it. What is this bill being introduced on here? It's, it's been introduced yeah. as about 200 uh, co-signers. Uh, co they, okay. need, they wow. need a few more. But uh, the current leadership in, uh, in the Senate will not bring it to the floor. Right. Okay, so it's a, it's a problem, but this is a bill that is it's a huge problem because you have longevity, longevity too going on, so it's draining a pension more. Because right. the actuarial age of a person is adding on a couple of years every year. Yeah. See, and one of the things that happened from two, as a, as a uh, from leftover from two thousand and eight is so many people had their four hundred one ks. Those four hundred one ks took a tremendous hit. Mm -hmm. So people who were getting ready to retire didn't retire. Right. Mm -hmm. So now the next generation that was coming to take those spots, those people couldn't get jobs. So what happens to them? Now they're graduating college. They're graduating with degrees. They're getting part-time work. They're still living at home. They're working in a totally different industry. So all of that they prepared for. There's no turnover. There's no turnover because people yeah. couldn't retire. Ah. Yeah. So what does that do? That backs up a, a friend of mine uh, who was the uh, president of the teachers union. I had asked him one time uh, about this because I saw, from a personal standpoint, people couldn't get teaching jobs because the teachers who had lost so much could not retire. So people were working in the uh, parks department or working right, in McDonald's anything, or hey, whatever working it took. Yeah, we, to, listen, to get anything. Yeah. Okay? That's a result from the financial crisis that people never heard about. Right. Or saw. Right. We saw it, those of us who run pension funds. You witnessed it. Right. Okay? We saw, saw it every you saw, day. You saw it firsthand. We see a little peripherally because of the business we're in, obviously. But we could talk about this forever. I, and I unfortunately, we're running out of time. But I have to thank you for coming on today. Oh, it was my, wow. my pleasure. This yeah. was great. Yeah, it was wonderful. So uh, on behalf of myself <laughs> and fast. John Ryan, really this is another fast. episode of Project SAFE, Seniors Against Financial Exploitation. And most of all, I have to thank President of Long Island Federation of Labor, AFL-CIO, which is John Dorso. Thanks again. My pleasure. Um, Project SAFE is intended to educate and help seniors fight and prepare for financial abuse, financial exploitation. It also teaches how adult children and any kind of retiree could avoid scams. If anybody would like us to do a presentation in front of their group, uh, civic association, church, synagogue, anything, just give us a call at 516-719-6396. Thanks a lot. That was very good.